Hey everybody, welcome back. This week I want to discuss a couple of different things. Um, one of which is how can I solve the problem that I ran into last week where everyone had a problem seeing my desktop capture because I was trying to record it through vMix itself. So we're going to talk about a couple of different alternatives for that. And we're also going to talk about the ATEM Mini Pro ISO. So because I've mentioned a couple times, I hate the way Blackmagic names things, I'm just gonna be referring to them as a mini, a mini pro or a mini ISO. Okay, we can just agree on those names. All right, sounds good. So one of the problems I had last week was I needed to record what I was doing on screen clearly. And if you saw last week's video, it was not clear at all. And I apologize for that. I did not even check. I just assumed because the camera part looked good that the desktop capture would look good and it didn't. So I've made steps and changes to fix that. And that's kind of what led to this discussion. So let's talk about the, um, the mini ISO at this point. What's different about the mini ISO? Well, between the pro and the ISO, physically nothing on the outside of the box. They have the exact same buttons. They have the exact same in and output ports, everything's the same. Inside the case, it has four extra record encoders, one for each input. Some common questions is, what is the record rate for those individual input ISO records? Well, it's not something you can select or change. Normally on, on this, you can go into the software that controls it and go to stream and you have six options, basically presets on how nice you want the stream or the record to look. With the ISO, it's already the highest possible quality based upon the input. So you're gonna get 70 megabits a second at whatever refresh rate your input that you're pumping into it is, that's how clean it's gonna be. So that's really nice. So I have a pro, the cost difference between the pro and the ISO, $300. If I were to start over now, I would probably get an ISO. It's $900 total or $895, whatever. And it would do the things I want it to do. Problem is I've already spent $600 on this. I don't want to spend another $900. So what are some other options that won't cost me $900? Well, there's a HyperDeck Studio. If you can find them on eBay, there are, there are the original HyperDeck shuttles. Let's go for about $250. It has an HDMI in and an HDMI out. You use a solid state hard drive to record to. There is no viewable monitor, but it does have the HDMI out. So you could use that as an ISO capture as well. You could also use a, a HyperDeck as an ISO record. So I could set it up where out of my computer, I would need a converter which I have a cheap converter box um, attached to this, converting HDMI to SDI, because the HyperDeck Studio only takes SDI. And I could ISO record and then use the HDMI out to go into the mini. I didn't do that. I did that initially, but I changed my mind. And here's why. I actually am coming out the HDMI output on the Pro, converting it to SDI, and capturing it inside the HyperDeck Studio. Basically, I'm losing my multi-view. But do I need my multi-view? Well, the short answer is gonna be yes. A multi-view is always gonna be nice. But with what I was doing last week, using vMix, having all my graphics and everything in vMix, and I need to bring all my cameras into vMix, I need to save that USB-C out for going to the computer, as opposed to just recording directly from the Pro. And a lot of people can say, why didn't you just record straight from the Pro? Well, I needed to put it back into vMix. And this leads us to something that I've seen almost daily on the A10 Mini forums and Facebook groups. Every, almost every day, somebody else asks, how can I use one USB-C out, take it to my computer, and then take it to a hard drive to record? I want to hook up to my computer so I can stream and, or for whatever, for whatever reason, let's say they want to take it into OBS and that's their, that's how they get all of their cameras 
to OBS or vMix or whatever software they're using. And, and I want to record uh, the clean output before I put graphics on it. How do I do that? What adapter do I buy? What's the, what's the quick fix? And shorter answer is, the common answer is, there isn't one. There just isn't. It wasn't designed to do that. It was designed to stream or be used to take into a computer and used with software like OBS and vMix, assuming that you're going to record with those or just record. There's a lot of ors involved when discussing the minis. You know, you can do this or you can do this. You can do this or you can do that. The setup I have today, I have the computer coming over to vMix right here. And so I could bring up all of my lower, the lower thirds and the videos and everything I had last week, and I can launch all of those things. Or I can plug up a hard drive and just record my camera switch. Today, I decided to, to do a different or, and that is I could use my multi-view or I could take that HDMI out, set it to program and record it independently. And that's what I chose to do. So this leads us back. So I want to circle this back around to the ISO. So would an ISO fix my problems? Well, probably not because the way it records the ISOs is you still need a hard drive plugged up to the USB-C to record all of those things. And if I'm using that USB-C to connect to a computer, I can't record. So black magic, if anybody at black magic is watching this and I'm not the first one to say this, please in your next model, we all know you're going to make another one. You've put out three in less than a year. In your next model, we need two USB-C outs and possibly two HDMI outs. I don't know what that does to your design, but in the last one, you just threw in four more record encoders, one on each input, and didn't have to change a thing. So if you have to make the unit itself a little bit taller, no one's gonna complain, but please, Listen to the people that are buying your product because everyone is saying this over and over and over again. Professionals that have been using this since day one and also people that just bought it last week and have never used video, any of your products before. If you go into the forums, and there's a forums on your website as well, everyone asks this question almost on the daily. So please listen to the people that are buying your products and give us what we're asking for. The fix I've made is in... <laughs> Instead of spending $900 more to get an ISO, which still may or may not work, spend $600 and get a um, HyperDeck shuttle. Go on eBay and see if you can find some older HyperDex. Or another thing that I was not able to pick up are the video assists. They run about five, $600 as well uh, for the five inch ones. That would work great. It's a nice five inch monitor to see what your ISO recording. Again, none of these financially are going to even out if you buy four of them to what an ISO is going to cost. But again, the moment you take you use that one USB-C to go to a computer, you're not recording. So sorry I didn't really show off um, the workflow all that much. Um, you know what? Just to prove I have multiple things, here's my handy dandy GoPro. This is the new light that I put up to give that YouTube lighting effect that apparently everyone needs to have now. Uh, the next couple of weeks, I do want to talk about vMix Call and set that up and show you a couple of things you can do with that as well. Um, let me look at the board, vMix Call. I do, I am working on a vMix versus OBS video. Um, I'm trying to hammer out all the categories on how I want to compare it. So we're working on that. Um, and hopefully soon, very soon, I'm going to start bringing you some other content that isn't AV world based, um, but we'll see how that goes. So thanks for watching. Thanks for watching until the very end. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you could give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, drop a comment or hit the subscribe button. That would be greatly appreciated as well.